project on the workbench today is this new in the box Bachman GP18. Now, this same model was also sold by AHM. It's uh, one of the few Bachman models that was made by Mahano instead of Cater. And I mean, it's missing the film from the front, but from my examination of this thing, it's never actually been run before. Of course, it is between 30 and 40 years old, so it does need a tune-up. And it looks like it may have taken some little impacts here and there because the uh, roof is not secure to the body and there's a bit of damage to the glass inside, but that's all easily repairable. And um, this roof piece breaking off from what I've seen is kind of a common problem with these anyway. So let's get to it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the body. It looks like that is held in place by two screws underneath the cab. One here, and one on the other side. And with that off, things should just start lifting out of place. And yes, there it goes. It's one piece body with just a tab in the back to hold that in place and there's a lead weight inside that's held in place by pressure using a piece of foam so I'll leave that in there. No reason to mess with that. The first thing I'm going to do actually is uh, repair that bit of damage to the um, cab there. So it's got this one window piece that's still good and in place but the other one is missing. So this piece I'll just glue in place and then the other one I'll replace with a piece of film. So it's at least got something to go there. And here's a piece of plastic film. I didn't cut it to any um, really exact shape. All I needed to do is fit in there in that spot and be large enough to cover the full window. So to hold that in place, I've got this uh, testers clear plastic cement. You definitely do not want to use super glue on parts like these because um, super glue kind of outgasses and it can leave a white fog on windows. So um, a glue like this, which is uh, made for plastics and dries completely clear with no outgassing is definitely the best option. So I'll just place that in there. Push that in place a little. Touch it down slightly. That'll take some time to dry, but that's at least holding the piece in place. And now that window has some glass. And then for the other one, since it doesn't have its other half to keep it snapped in place, I'll also use some of this uh, plastic clear cement to hold that on. I'll just do this one by hand instead of using pliers. It's perfectly fine. And that's got a bit more weight to it, so I'll let it dry while it's sitting this way. And then while that's going on, I'll start working on the chassis. So here's the standard Mahano eight-wheel drive chassis. It's got a three-pole motor, an Atherton-style universal setup, headlight, and all-nickel wheels. And I was kind of surprised to find that this one has eight-wheel electrical pickup. Usually the models I see with this chassis have had four-wheel electrical pickup, so that's definitely nice to see. That'll make it a lot more reliable. These three-pole motors, I found them to be smooth and quiet runners, but they don't have good low-speed control because of a lot of cogging in the design. The mechanism here feels a bit stiff, so it'll definitely need a first-time tune-up before I run it. So to start, I'll just uh, pop out these universals. It's easy enough to do. Just kind of pull it back into the motor's cup joint. It snaps off from the Atherton style coupling there. This one's taking a little more. And when that happens, use a screwdriver instead. Just kind of uh, go into that joint with it and Pry it off. There goes that one. And then the motor is held in place by this uh, black clip in the front. 
just uh, try to get a good grip, grip in there and squeeze it there. And then it pulls up. And with that out of the way, the motor moves back and lifts out. And that is wired in place. Feels like it's turning pretty freely. But since this has never been run before and the commutator does look a little bit rough, I'm gonna pull this motor apart and give it a little more in-depth cleaning. Getting these motors apart is easy enough. All you do is uh, pull these plates away from it. You wanna keep your finger over there while you're pulling it out because otherwise the brush spring can very easily fly out. There's a lot of tension on these, you can see. Spring pulls out and there goes the brush with it. Sometimes those go together, sometimes they don't. I'll just need to remember the one with the red wires goes to the bottom where the logo is. Blue wires go into the top. At that time the brush didn't come out with it. But a little tapping and it drops right out. These joints just pull right off. At least one of them does, you have to pry the other one. There goes that. And then to get the motor apart, all you have to do is go in with the flat blade screwdriver. Just kind of dig in there a little. Pry these clips up. And now that just pulls right off. And let's see, it's got that little key there for holding down. So again, I just have to remember that goes on the bottom with the Mahano brand logo. Come on. This one's a little difficult. There it goes. So there's the armature. It's actually pretty decent size, has quite a few windings on it. So I'll just give this my own little standard motor tune-up. I've got my mini lathe here. Just uh, get that in there. And I've got a polishing wheel. Put a bit of this ultra fine emery polish on. Get that nice and shiny. Just get that bit of dirt off of there. And that looks about as shiny as you can possibly get one of these things. And of course having that nicely polished will help to reduce wear on the brushes. Get this put back together. Goes right there. This one goes right here. And just close those clips back up. Press them in tightly using the end of a screwdriver or some other blunt hard tool. And that seems to be turning nice and free, or at least as free as one of these motors can. They cog pretty hard. You can see it skipping like that instantly. <laughs> oh well. No low speed control from these motors, but once you get them going, they're usually smooth runners. Just 
a little oil in each of the bearings. Because those were completely dry when I pulled this apart. And then before I put it into the rest of the chassis, I'll give the trucks a tune-up. Now to remove the trucks from one of these, again, it's just held on by a clip. You just All you do is go in with your flat blade screwdriver, pry that up. Be careful not to damage the handrails. It's easy to slip and do that. There that goes. Then the truck just drops out from the bottom and you have full access to it. And most of the time this isn't necessary. But if you ever do have to pull it out, that's how you do it. Just open the bottom plate. Pry that. And when they have truck mounted couplers like this one, first you pull out that side and go that way. And then there's the inside. Wheels come off right like that. And the truck itself is also snapped together. There's a latch there and a latch there. And the side pulls off. And now you have full access to the inside of the truck. And this feels pretty stiff. So I'll go ahead and pull all these gears out and give them a bit of cleaning and fresh oil. So even though this grease is unused, it's uh, been around for a while. So to get off the worst of the stuff, I'm just uh, kind of wrapping this paper towel around it. Twisting each of the gears in there, trying to go in with the teeth. This way you can kind of use your nail to go in. And that helps to pull out a lot of the grease. But you can see that's already looking a lot cleaner. And this uh, worm has two spirals on it, which means it works about twice as fast but they also have some gear reduction in there to compensate for that. And yeah, that looks pretty good. And then it's the same for the rest of the gears. Just uh, put them in there, kind of uh, wipe, them around, wipe them around, clean them up. The large gear is kind of interesting because it's got this kind of uh, half circle shape on it, which I uh, wasn't quite sure what that was for, but then I remembered that Mahano is a major European toy company, so it only makes sense they would do some interchangeable parts, and that probably had some sort of a use in one of their toy products. Very interesting. For some harder to reach areas, like the inside of the truck, the Q-tip really comes in handy. You just go in there and wipe stuff out. And I think that's about as far as I need to go with this one. And now with things cleaned up, I'll put it back together. Start with the large gear. Fits right in there. Next is the smaller gear. And then the reduction gear. Place that in there just like that. Make sure the square part is square inside. And then snap this plate back on. And while you're snapping this back on, you want to be sure not to knock any gears out of place. There we go. Now add some fresh oil to each of the bearings. And I'll drop the axles in. You squeeze the contacts with your fingers like that. 
while putting them in. And then things hold in place just like that. A little more oil for each of the axles. And I'll just spread some grease in the gears. Doesn't have to be too much, just enough to spread through the whole system. You have to get some onto that uh, middle reduction gear that meshes with the worm. There, that should be, that should be enough. So now to get it back together, first thing you do, position it just like that, with the long coupler retainer going through that slot, place the coupler inside, and then snap it on, and that's one truck done. And to get the truck back in, just uh, pull up on those wires while you're working with it. That goes in there. Make sure the wires are lined up. And then snap that clip back on. And the wires are held in by a small, uh, little gap in the middle of the clip, which you can see there. And now, do the same for the other truck. While cleaning the second truck, I found the reason for the stiff movement was that there was some grease here that had completely dried up and hardened, so I had to actually scrape that off and then polish the shaft smooth. But now, um, things turn nice and freely there. So no resistance at all. And now with the trucks tuned up, all that's left is putting the motor back together and reassembling the thing. Drop that brush in there, put the spring over it. Not quite there. I think I can squeeze that into the rest of the screwdriver now. Yeah, there it goes. And slide that on. Then do the same for the other brush. The top one's easier because they actually put this little finger at the end of the plate, so all you have to do is uh, keep the spring aligned on there. Push that in place again. Now drop the motor back into the chassis. There, that's pushed back in place. Take the clip. Snap that in, put that into the motor joint first, and then snap it onto the truck joint. Just have to turn that to get it aligned. There we go. Do the same for the other one. Just make sure the wires are all out of the way of everything. Now before I put the shell on, I'm just going to power this up real quick. Positive wire to the top brush. Negative wire to that terminal on the light. Not getting any movement here. I tried powering up the motor and didn't get any response. I think there might just be some tarnish in certain parts, so here's the bottom of one of those brush plates. Polish that up. Let's we'll see if this makes any difference. I also found there's a lot of tarnish on the brush springs. So for that, I'll just uh, give a bit of sandpaper there, see if I can take some of that off. And I see a little bit of shiny metal on top now. I think that'll help. All right, let's give this another shot. Positive there. Negative there. There we go.
It seems to be working pretty well. A couple little noises, but I think those will work themselves out with some runtime. As for the wheels, those still appear to be perfectly clean, so I don't think I even have to worry about them this time around. And before I put the body back on, I'll give it a quick track test here. Yep, no problems at all. Getting the body back on is just as easy as taking it off. Line up that rear tab. Gently set it down into the railings there. So now I'll just take those two screws and secure the body. Now for that broken cab roof. Still has one good tab on it, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some liquid plastic glue here. Spread just a little on the top of that side. A little bit there. Carefully place this back on top without touching the glued area or letting the glued area touch anything else. Actually, you know what? Looks like I got the sides reversed for that glass. So I'm just gonna take this piece back out another piece of film there instead and then continue with putting the roof back on. Now, that window film I put in doesn't exactly account for the tab on there so I'm just gonna clip that off. File that down flat. I'll secure both sides with glue. I don't plan on taking this off again anyway, so it's no problem for me. There we go. All put back together and ready to run. And basically all of the Mahano all-wheel drive systems for um, American prototypes have the same or a very similar mechanism, so what you've seen in this video can be applied to really just about any of them. Oh, and one more little trick here. It's got these uh, horn hook couplers that are mounted at a European height and then raised up. So for just a quick way to make these work with KD couplers, clip off the horn from the horn hook. Now let's get this thing on the layout and see how it does. Got it on the layout. Power it up and off it goes. And there's full speed. Yeah, that's a nice smooth runner. Now let's see it going through a switch and pulling a load. Yep, that eight wheel pickup really helps. The ones with the four-wheel pickup are quite a bit less reliable going through switches. But this one had no problem at all. A little bit of chirping noise. That happens with these motors sometimes, but a lot of times it'll also work itself out. And no problem at all pulling a load of cars either.
I'm just going to let this run for a while and get broken in a bit. Well, I've had that running for just over an hour now, about half of that time in each direction. And it seems to have improved quite a bit. The current draws lower, the speed's increased, which would indicate that things have freed up quite a bit and settled in where they need. So um, this turned out to be a very smooth and I'd say reliable runner. And that's actually been my experience with pretty much all the um, Hano diesels I've tried with this kind of a drive in them. And the same kind of drive's been used in models by, I mean, this one here is Bachman. I said before it was also AHM. They also made most of the products for IHC, as well as a few for Lifelike and some other manufacturers along the way. And as long as you're willing to put a bit of time into fixing them, they may not be the best looking models around or most detailed. But if you're on a budget and need an inexpensive fleet, then these are a very good option.